I want you to imagine this. It's 45 degrees, it's 90% humidity, you've got sweat that's dripping from your head all the way down to your toes. Your heart's pounding, loud and hard. That's right. All of you in this room have just run 800 kilometres over 13 days in one of the hottest, driest landscapes on the planet. I mean, how the hell did we get here? It's funny. When we're young, we always think that anything is possible. But at some stage, as we start to get older, we begin to believe in you know, boundaries, limitations, glass ceilings, and I am living proof to tell you that these are all illusions. Bob Dylan has this incredible lyric. It goes, he not busy being born is busy dying. You know, I can't do it as cool as Bob, but to me that means life equals growth. And when we stop entering the new, we become stuck, we become stagnant, and at worst, we start to go backwards. To live big, we must be willing to enter into new territory. And suffering, well, it's a part of it. It doesn't mean that we love that part, but it's necessary. And when we start to make mistakes, you know, in the unknown, I reckon the most powerful question that we can ask ourselves is what is the next best plan? It takes real courage to adapt, to be uncomfortable, and to not be at the mercy of the expectations of others. Because the way that other people perceive us, particularly when we're young, can play a real role in who we become. You know, the narratives of our lives, the stories that we choose to tell ourselves. And when I was a kid, I told myself a lot of stories. I was this short, uncool, uncoordinated kid who was always the last to be picked in sports. I made this unconscious link that I didn't belong in the sporting arena. You know, so much so that I did anything to avoid it. And you know what, your abilities in sport, particularly when you're young, can play a huge role in your social currency in the schoolyard. So when I found myself, 20 years later, having run from the west to the east of India on an expedition myself, I realised that none of us are defined or limited by our pasts. And let me say it, right here and now, short, uncool kids can run. You know what? I never actually thought about being an endurance athlete. I grew up in this family of thinkers. You know, my mum, she's a demon on the lawnmower, but she's never run a day in her life. And my dad, he had polio as a child. So he has one leg that's shorter than the other. So it makes running a bit difficult, although when he gives it a crack, it's quite amusing. I decided to study something that was more aligned to my natural talents. So I did a double degree in performing arts and law. I had these aspirations to either be a lawyer for the UN or an actress on Home and Away and Neighbours. <laughs> Clearly trying to hedge my bets. And one day I was in class and we were doing a play and the director casted a professional actor. And that was Bud Tingle. Bud Ting will share this incredible piece of advice. He said, the secrets to a successful life is to just say yes. He goes, I know it sounds simple, but when you say yes, you meet incredible people, you go on new experiences, and luck, it will follow you wherever you go. He was this man, 85 years of age, who said success for him came down to saying yes. I was 25, full of potential and promise, and whenever opportunities came my way, I'd say no. I mean, I'd say no thank you, of course. I wasn't being rude. But if I wasn't sure what the process or the end destination would be, I had to say no, because this stage of my life was characterised by a fear of failure. So I said I'd do something different. My new mantra became, if you want something that you've never had, you've got to do something that you've never done. And that doesn't mean just saying yes to everything. You know what? There's an abundance of opportunities. For some people, there are so many options that they don't know where to start, and so they never do. And other people, they wait for opportunity to seek them out. And I'd say for most of us, it doesn't work that way. You have to be willing to create the life that you want. I mean, this is your life. It's your race to run. Bronnie Ware is an Australian nurse who cares for patients in their final 12 weeks of life, and she recorded their dying epiphanies. Do you want to know what the number one regret that people listed? They said, I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life that others expected. And so thanks to Bud, I went on this yes quest to, to experience a series of once-in-a-lifetime opportunities. I backpacked through the US and I slept under the stars in the national parks. I went into the middle of the Australian desert and I performed circus arts for Indigenous kids. I went back to the US and I volunteered for a not-for-profit organisation that was providing free defence for prisoners on death row. 
But do you want to know what was the most unexpected transformation on my Yes Quest? It was signing up for my first marathon. I would love to tell you that I crushed it. The reality was I sucked. And the only reason that I got to the finishing line is because of this lady. She dragged me physically through the final 10 Ks. And trust me, gravel rash, it's a real thing. Whenever we're transitioning from something that we do know to we don't know, there's this clunky phase in the middle where we're finding our way, and it can feel really uncomfortable. This is the space where so many people give up. You know what, whenever we enter into new terrain, it can be a new business, new hobby, sport, relationship, there's always a period of rapid adaption. And for me in that race, I didn't think I could run one more step, let alone 10 more Ks. But I was wrong. And when I got to the finishing line, it did not matter how ugly it looked in moments. This was a personal breakthrough for me. And it just left me wanting more. I wanted to explore more of myself and more of the world, more of my potential. And I thought, well, you know what? I have just run my first marathon. I'm going to become the first woman in the world to complete the four desert Grand Slam. That was four 250-kilometre desert ultramarathons in the hottest, coldest, driest and windiest deserts on Earth, all in one calendar year. I mean, the rules of the race were that each race went for six days, and you actually had to carry everything that you needed to survive in a pack on your back as you were running. I mean, what could go right? I had no idea what I was doing, but my survival strategy was simple. Adopt an attitude of relentless forward motion so that slow progress was still progress. You see, ego and pace couldn't be the focus for me. And as the race kicked off, really early on, I started to see people drop out. And I realized in the face of constant overwhelm, people think they have limited options. But I decided that I had a whole range of possibilities at my disposal. You know what I did? I created a checklist. I created a checklist of everything that I could do to keep me in the game. So I could slow my pace. I could buddy up with another runner to distract myself from the pain. I could put on some tunes and chariots of fire. It works a real treat in moments like this. I could crawl on my hands and knees to the finishing line if that's what it took. I mean, we all need a plan to get us in the game. But when that plan no longer works or isn't relevant, the most important thing that we have to keep saying is be willing to, you know, detach from that plan and create that next best plan. And you know what? I didn't just get to the finishing line. I actually became the first woman in the world to complete that race series. But, but then I made my next big mistake. Because after that point, I felt that I had to continually keep topping it. I thought, I've got to do bigger goals, higher mountains, longer, faster. And that's what happens when we start to test ourselves. That and everyone else keeps asking us, so what's next? And I wanted to say a bloody good lie down, but I was compelled to continually step up. And so I heard about this race in northern India, 222 kilometres of non-stop running, peaking at 6,000 metres above, above sea level. And I wondered, I mean, how hard could that be? And as you can all imagine, a really freaking hard. Not only was I hypothermic, dehydrated, and pushed well beyond my capabilities, I discovered that my reason for being there wasn't long, you know, wasn't big enough to cope with the suffering that I was experiencing. You know, some people, they just want that test of how physically strong they are. But for me in that moment, I was desperate now for my footsteps to count beyond the test of how strong I could be. I wanted it to mean more. And I started to wonder, could I use my ability to run long to support social justice causes around the world? You know, it was a path that didn't exist. I checked SEEK, there was nothing there. I realised I have to create something. You know, this would become my next best plan, where I would turn that raw idea into a reality. And that's where the run across India really happened. When I describe the run across India, I do it really simply through numbers. 3,253 kilometres, 77 days, six pairs of shoes, 1,900 bowls of dal, which can get really dangerous because it gets things running in a whole other direction. <laughs> but you know what? I did everything that I could to get ready. I would, you know, I, oh my gosh, when I think about it, it was intense. I would put a, I devised a route, and then after devising the route, I collaborated with the world's largest not-for-profit organisation. I honed my purpose which was to explore the barriers to why children were unable to access quality education across the country, and we were raising funds for um, education programs across that country. 
I put a treadmill in a hot yoga studio, and the class was finished at night time. I would turn down the lights, I would crank up the heat, and I would run to midnight. I was doing whatever I thought it would take to be ready. And then I got to India, and I realized I hadn't even scratched the surface of what I needed to do. To say that India was hot is an absolute understatement. It was bloody hot. <laughs> Duh. I was running for up to 14 hours a day, and the heat was searing off the bitumen and right through my body. And the humidity reached over 100% more than once, and it suffocated my lungs and brought my mind to capacity. I was running on the side of the road because I was trying to avoid getting hit by the cars that were flying past. The problem was that I was running on a slope, and with every single step, that slope created imbalances through my body until it started to break down. I've never felt that kind of pain before. You know, I was anxious, I was stressed during the day that I was riddled with pain, and at night, I was riddling it further with fear of when I'd be forced to stop. You know, I never questioned my desire to be there. My purpose was so strong, but I did actually start to wonder, is the human body designed to actually go this far? And I reached rock bottom, out quite literally. <laughs> you know, it was actually the best thing that ever happened to me. It provided clarity on what my options were, and I had two of them. I could quit, or I could do something different. I could create the next best plan. My body was suffering, but my mind wasn't doing anything to make it better. Instead of letting my body recover at night time, I was fueling it with toxic fears that weren't serving me at all. I realized that in order to let my, my, my body heal, I was going to have to be kind to my mind. And so I started to create daily rituals. Whenever the run was done, I'd be like, great, that's done, even if it was really, really terrible. I wouldn't dwell. I got clear on the fundamentals of recovery, which also happened to be the fundamentals of happiness. Rest, eat good food, hydrate, and be kind to the people around you. It's actually that simple. And the moment that I made that shift, no, my mind actually started to respond, and my body. It's because I had the space to do what it's designed to do, which is adapt and heal. You know, when I finished that run on day 77, my body wasn't broken. In fact, my body and my mind were the strongest that it had ever been. So I've now, you know, run on every continent on the planet. I've pushed my body in some of the most extreme and inhospitable places on Earth. I have learnt to become open-minded to the process and what the end destination will hold for me. But do you know what the biggest shift for me is that I now see suffering through different eyes. You can't avoid it, and nor should you try. It's this vital part of growth. And if your purpose is strong enough, it actually gets placed in perspective. But even sometimes I get surprised at how things turn out. Two years ago, my torch got snuffed out as a contestant on the TV show Survivor. I'll be honest with you, I thought I would rock. I mean, I had just run across India. But you know what? It was the most overwhelming experience for me. The cameras were in front of your face all the time. You know, people had very conflicting missions, which was obviously to be the sole survivor. And I just, if I was really brutally honest, it reminded me of that feeling, you know, when I was back at school and just not belonging. But I have learnt from past experiences that the things that shake us the most can actually prove to be the greatest outcomes, even if there's something different than what you planned to begin with. I'm on this island, and all of a sudden, I met this incredible man. And you know what? We're on that island, we became friends quickly, and to use Survivor Speak, we formed an alliance, which got us booted off really quickly. After the camera stopped rolling, we fell in love. And um, I was at this point in my life where I just didn't think that I was going to have a child. In fact, I always had this narrative in my mind that I'd started to push my body so hard that I wouldn't be one of those lucky ones to actually do that. And 14 months ago, Mark and I welcomed our baby boy to the world. We didn't win the game of Survivor, but we created our own reality. And talk about a great next best plan. When we're bold enough to say yes to the unknown, we might not know how things will turn out, but it will always bring us closer to our purpose and help squash those barriers that we place in our mind. Thank you very much.